you know, I was kind of, I was excited about it and telling it, it, about it to colleagues and people looked at me like I'm, I'm trying to climb the Everest shirtless or something like that. I, I feel that math has the tendency to surprise you for the better. We just stared at the board for, you know, for two hours until one of us would go like, oh, maybe, uh, no, it doesn't matter. You know, it's like boxing, like someone is like this, you know, you, you like, you, you, you keep moving. Welcome to Matlab Balance. Today, our guest is Tamar Schlank, a professor at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, working in homotopy theory and arithmetic geometry. Welcome, Tamar. Hi, thank you very much for your kind invitation for this interview. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Here. So tell us, please, what brought you into mathematics? I knew that I wanted to be a mathematician for a very, very young age. I'm, I, I'm not sure that I knew exactly what it means, but I, I, I think I was about six. So my, so this is, this is what I remember, you know, you never know with those kinds of memories, how much self-editing is there. But what I remember is that I wanted to be an astronaut. And, um, and my cousin, which, which I, I love, I still love very much, told me, uh, if you'll be an astronaut, she was, so I was like six and she was, uh, she was four years older than me. And she told me, you know, if you'll be an astronaut, um, we're never gonna see each other because you're going to be for months and months in, in, a, in, the, in the, you know, <laughs> in space. So I was like, no, 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 I don't wanna be an astronaut. So I wanna be, I wanna be a scientist or something like that. So that, that's the first kind of, I, I remember this switch somehow. Um, and so this is, so, so I basically knew that I wanted to be a scientist, you know, I think for very, very early on. And um, again, I'm not entirely sure when, when did I realize that there's such a thing, which is, you know, a mathematician as opposed to other sciences, it's, it's a little bit hard to say, but I do remember being hooked on doing math when I was six, because I remember that, um, I remember it's kind of my first proof, you can say. I either learned or realized, I don't exactly remember that, that the numbers which are divisible by nine, the sum of digits is nine, you know, below a hundred. And I remember I, st I still have this, this vivid image of, of being something, somewhere around my, my house where I grew up and, and realizing that there's a reason to that because every time you add nine, it's like adding 10 and removing one. So therefore the sum of digits stays the same. And I, and I still kind of remember the realization that there's kind of, there's a pattern, the first a pattern, but then the pattern has a reason. And I, I just, it, it's immediately captivated me. Like this idea you can like, you know, I, I, again, I was six, I haven't thought about it in that explicit words, but I remember being kind of falling in love with this idea that you can explain this. There's, there's kind of a reason that there, there's, a, there's something that seems like magic and then you can explain why it happens. And it's a very simple explanation. When you understand it, you see why it, why it, why it had to be. I started college when I was like at the same time that I started high school. So I kind of I only, I, I, didn't, I didn't finish high school, but I finished the math uh, finals uh, in Israel. And, Again, it was kind of like, it's, you know, I, I already knew that I, that I really liked math, but university level math was, was kind of falling in love with it again. You know, I, I remember it was, I really, really enjoyed it. And there was set theory and calculus and, and linear algebra. And I felt like everything is so beautiful. So I, I, I kind of knew that, that that's, what, that's what I want to do. Uh, did you enjoy it? So was it easy for you to follow the subject at the university or, or you enjoyed also that you couldn't follow some of them? It, it wasn't it wasn't hard it felt it felt very natural to me but I did enjoy the, the kind of there was a challenge and I enjoyed the challenge but it did but but at the beginning you know you know nowadays I spend I, I think you know 95 of, of percent of my time in my office uh, staring at the board in, 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 in confusion but back then <laughs> back then uh, 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 most things seems very, very, very reasonable all the time. So I'm like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That, I remember that was the feeling. I, I wonder where, where it went. I... 
often things look natural when they are shown to us uh, rather than when we have to guess ourselves. I think so. Yeah, I think I think that's exactly right. I think you know, you, I had I had very good professors, and 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 they already kind of they they gave this beautiful narrative in which everything is is um, every step follows after the the next. But I think you know that. At the same time, um, there's there's this 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 feeling before you understand something, this this uneasiness, and then the the kind of catharsis when you do, and 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 I was kind of you know I got addicted to that. So so this is you know so this is this is what you get by right by doing research, by trying to get to the next point that you don't understand at all. And just sit in this confusion until something something clicks. You know, I, I started to see more and more glimpses of that as things progressed. It's uh, it, it became a bigger bigger part of the experience. But but I I like it. It's 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 you know I think it's my you know my personal theory that that's that's that is one of the things that is common to all mathematicians. I think it's 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 you know it's the same. It's addiction to the to the to the kind of pain of of not understanding. And then the you know the, the catharsis when something something suddenly seems clear. I never learned to enjoy that pain, so <laughs> if for me it's very weird that people can enjoy it. But you're right that maybe most mathematicians can. <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to say any any too you know general every mathematician needs, but I'm, I I think there's something about about this. There, there's something about math which is which is that the answer is is always more beautiful than the question somehow. Like once you understand things, they are always become nicer and more aesthetic i you know i i i used to watch um i, I was once kind of interested in, in magic tricks I, I never never myself i don't i don't have the dexterity to do anything like that myself but i would kind of i was kind of interested in them in them a little bit as a riddle like you know how how did how did they do this and i would sometimes kind of watch some and try to guess and maybe you know and then maybe read the answer in sometimes and 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 at some point I got kind of kind of disillusioned with that. It's much more impressive in some without knowing the answer. It's kind of it's it's, it's it looks very beautiful but with, with with the answer it's kind of oh there's a there's another one in you know there's another card which is exactly the same behind the and it curls his hand in some way so you can't see it or something like that. Um, and 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 I feel like in a map it's always the opposite. Like 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 something is weird, but when you understand it, it's always more beautiful than you realize. It's like oh wow, that's that's kind of there's 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 some deeper meaning. There's some there's some kind of um, an additional perspective. It's it's um, it's like uh, it's like climbing a mountain. Like when you get to the top, you, the view is just breathtaking. Like like it's uh, so, so I, I I feel like you know so. Sometimes you don't, you know. Sometimes I don't get to the, I never get to the to the to the uh, to the top of the mountain, and I'm just wandering around in the dark. But in the rare, in the rare cases when I do, I, I always find it breathtakingly beautiful. It's always kind of. Yeah. So uh, actually, when preparing questions for this interview, I was thinking that it's unfortunate that I'm the interviewer because I really love your questions. So in those seldom occasions when um, I was at your seminar or visiting your research group, I was really impressed that you always managed to somehow pinpoint the main, uh, like main moments in the big story and ask about them. So uh, could you somehow describe how do you get to like unwrap a big picture and see where the main things are? Oh, well, well, thank you. Um, I have a very, I think, top to bottom uh, thinking in math. Uh, and and I think, you know, I kept I kept doing this this probably wrong generalities about mathematicians. Here's what I'm going to do the other thing. This is not a generality. I think there, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of mathematical thinking, um, and there, there, there's people who kind of you know they start with with some kind of an example or or, or some kind of computation or phenomena that they kind of see by hand and they kind of it's kind of develops out of it, and and I'm always kind of um, Really, really impressed and, and fascinated by this because it's the kind of thinking that is very hard for me. Um, because the way that I think about things is very is very kind of talked about, kind of a meta story and a story and and um, and and I think you know my, the, the way that I ask questions 
art just just tend to be from that perspective. I'm, I'm trying to tell the story to myself in a way that I can understand, which tends to be top to bottom. And almost every mathematical product I ever worked on started with kind of this this kind of oh what if there what if there was this kind of a thing that is like the other thing, but uh, but 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 it's it, but you know I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but it's going to be something like that. And then, and you know, and then just kind of trying to make the details more and more uh, um, precise as I go. And, and you know, some people I think um, enjoy this kind of, of 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 mathematical storytelling. But but I had experience with 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 mathematicians that that you know amazing mathematicians uh, that that were kind of wait like they what do you mean like. Can you can you kind of pinpoint it? And when I couldn't, they, they disengage. But I'm, I'm I'm also always trying to collaborate with people that 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 think about those things in a different way, and and I and I enjoy the challenge of it. I think it's worth the try. It, I I have to admit it doesn't always work. Sometimes it's, the gap is, is is too wide, and and we just don't speak the same language at all. But I, but I, I, I have tried in, in uh, many times kind of trying to, to, oh, you seems to be talking about things in a very, very different way than I do. So let, let's try to talk to each other and see if it works. So we're, we're going to run uh, some, some seminar next year here at EPUU, um, which is about uh, kind of applications of homotopy theory to condense, uh, uh, condense matter and field theories following the works of Hopkins and Fried and, and others. And, and, and one of the things that we decided to try, because it's kind of, you know, it has physics in it, is to bring physicists uh, uh, from, from, the, from the physics department and to try to run a joint seminar wow. and, and, uh, and, and see if we can do it together. There's, there's some idea. Um, it's, not in, it's not possible to learn a language without, without learning a way of thinking. And I feel, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's a blessing and a curse. It makes it very hard to talk to someone with a different language because it's more than a different language. It's a different way of thinking. But it also means that maybe if you learn a little bit of the language and able to communicate, hopefully you necessarily gain some other way of thinking uh, and which can, be, which can be very interesting. So, so we'll see. I'm going to try. I have to admit that, that you know, without mentioning names, a lot of people award me that it's impossible to run a joint seminar for mathematicians and physicists and have it successful. Uh, so a lot of people are like, you know, I was kind of, I was excited about it and telling it about it to colleagues and people looked at me like I'm, you know, like I'm saying that I'm, I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to climb the Everest shirtless or something like that. Like, like, oh, it's very brave of you. That was the kind of reaction. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a bold attempt that will necessarily fail. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my optimism. This sounds exciting. Well, in the beginning of your answer, I realized why I like your questions so much because I also think from top to the bottom. And so your questions match my way of thinking. <laughs> in addition to being very good questions, that's why I particularly enjoy them. Uh, but uh, so I can totally relate to this um, way of thinking, but then how do you get to the bottom? Uh, what, what I find the hardest, I think, is 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 actually kind of emotionally is that there's 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 a point in which uh, the overarching idea you know I'm already so much in love with it and um, and the details seem to refuse to uh, to follow and I'm kind of worried that you know it's it's more than being worried you know there's there's of course the uh, um, I don't know the uh, career aspects of, oh, if this is going to fail, then I'm not going to have the paper, so I'm not going to have promotion, then I'm not going to have the job and things like that. But, and, and those, you know, those exist. And, and, but, but, but more, more, more than that, I feel like it's, it's you, you, I feel like I lost some, some, some beautiful thing that could have been, and, and it's, it's hard. But it does motivate me to try kind of to, to go, um, to get to the point in which I can, you can, I can justify the overall story. And, presented it in its correct form. I feel that math has the tendency to surprise you for the better. That's, that's kind of the thing. <laughs> I, had this, I had this one time, I had, I had this idea. 
and that 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 you know, it's kind of top to bottom idea, some methods to disprove some conjecture. Um, and, and, and the idea had two parts, uh, two, two steps. And, 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 I, and this, the first step seemed completely mysterious and, 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 and kind of completely unclear how, 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 the, how I can move from the idea to the actual thing. And the second step seemed like a, seemed like a simple computation. Uh, that once once I'll know what I want to do, it's it's it's, it's just going to be uh, cooking up some some simple example, and and this was this was something that I, I uh, uh, worked on with uh, Vesna Stoyanovska, and um, we were kind of we were talking about things that kind of were in that direction for a while, and then then she moved to Essen, and I was still at the U.S. And when we decided to meet for a week and work on it, so I, so I, so I, um, so so I flew to to, to Essen, and I remember like flying on on the way in the plane and, and realizing that that we have kind of <laughs> I have no idea where what to do, like we, it was it felt like a complete mystery, and uh, and 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 for a week, uh, we we were this this was I think in, in many ways one of the most remarkable weeks of research that I ever had. Because we were, we we, we, kind of, we, we we sat together in the morning, we we, we just stared at, at the board. I I, th I think it was like for you know for two hours until one of us would go like, oh maybe, uh, no it doesn't matter like this for I think, uh, you know and then <laughs> one after the other were like ideas that didn't go anywhere and then some somewhere in the middle of the first day, we had one idea that seems to progress. And we went one step, but it seems seem infinitely far. It's just, just we, we just had one understanding. We 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 exhausted. We were exhausted. We went to sleep. We woke up in the morning. We started again, and once again, we were just stare, just just staring in silence for so long. And then you know, uh, and then and at some point, kind of moving one step, and like and by the end of the week, amazingly, uh, we actually had. The formula, the formula that we were looking for, and this was so exciting, and and then, um, and and then we had this 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 second step, um, which was supposed to be easy, and I was I was so excited. I, I remember you know, on, on my way back, I, I felt like we had it. We just need this need to, to you know to use it to disprove this conjecture. We only need to do what we just need to to find the right example, and just and that's it. It's going to it's, it's done. And, and it's such a beautiful story, and it it's kind of makes so so much sense. And then uh, uh, and the, and then when when trying to work on the second step, uh, it turned out that that it's, <laughs> it's it's in some sense so much harder than the first one, and 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 so it's, they're just you know this computation could there's all kinds of infinities that you have to control and completely unclear how you're going to do it, and 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 I was so devastated by by this you know by by this feeling that I you know I, I had this story and, and and I got and I got vindicated I got I got it correct all the way here and then this last step that that I couldn't I I just stopped working completely on anything for for, for a while I don't know like like uh, two months or something I just couldn't do anything it, it just it just was completely it, it took all the energy out of me. And then it came back, and, 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 and at some point I want to do the second step. I, 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 I have, we haven't uh, actually since. There is some pain in which when, when, for me, that when, when the story doesn't match the reality, and sometimes it can be, it can be, it can even be too much. But uh, I try to be more patient, and when, when it does, it's, it's, uh, when it works, it's rewarding. When it doesn't, you know, you, go, you try something else. And. Uh, when you're mentally exhausted, do you like push yourself to work further or you um, take breaks and hope that the brain refreshes? How, how, do you, how do you decide when it's time to stop thinking about something or to start thinking again? Um, well, there's kind of, I don't know, there's just kind of two questions. Like one of them, I guess, is, you know, like in, in the working routine. Not, not some some specific project or just you know when um, 
so there, there it's, it's actually very, uh, very simple for me because I, 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 I just shut down uh, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm too tired. I just, I, I, I just immediately fall asleep. It's, uh, it's, um, uh, my wife is always jealous of my, you know, my ability to just, just fall asleep in any, any circumstances whatsoever. Uh, it, it's sometimes a, a problem because um, it sometimes happens in, in talks that I'm trying to listen to. But, uh, uh, but, but, <laughs> but other than that, it's, um, um, as for, you know, kind of more globally, the, the, the project, um, it happens that I feel sometimes like, oh, you know, this project kind of, um, the water is too, is too muddy. You know, we're like we try this thing and we try that thing, and, and it's just kind of we got to the point where we don't really remember where we started, and 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 when I feel like I'm there, I'm 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 I'm, I'm saying, oh, you know, oh, you know what? Probably it's a good idea to kind of leave it there and then come back to it, with kind of uh, when 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 we kind of can 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 see see better where where we started and and you know, you know what is. What is what is the more important thing in, in the story, or do we believe the story is still? Of course, you know, I, I I have I have a lot of collaborators and a lot of students, so there's a lot of you know, um, a lot of a lot of what I'm working on is also determined by by that, <laughs> by 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 the social aspect of that. That for me is a big part. Of it. So I'm 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 happy about it. It's not a complaint. If there's someone that that I enjoy working with, which is available to work with me on something that I, that I'm interested in. That's, that's a high priority to, to, to try to make that happen because for me, it's a very social thing. I, I, I don't, I don't think I have any single other papers at all. And I don't think I have even one. And I don't, I have maybe one project in my career, maybe two, two projects in my entire career that I worked on alone. It's not, it's not, it's not the way I usually do things. That's cool. I mean, it's much more fun, right, to do it. Absolutely. It's, it, you know, we were, we were saying like how we think about map as kind of a top to bottom story. And, and you know, it's a, you want to share the story. For, for me, it's a social activity. So how do you manage to advise so many students? Just do it very badly. Um, you know, joking aside, I, I, I hope that I do a good job. It's it's hard to advise many students. One thing that I do would say that I is one thing that is is that I enjoy it very very much. It's 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 you know it's one of the things that I I never thought about it before you know before having a tenure track job. It wasn't like you know I when I was a PG student or an undergrad and I was you know I I, I would say I wanted to be a mathematician for a very long time. I, I was. I never thought of myself. Oh, and you know, and I had, and I will have this student that I will advise. Uh, but that never kind of crossed my mind. And now it's, you know, it's it's a part of the job that I really, really, really like. I really enjoy. It. Another thing that I do, uh, which I, which is, is that I work, I work in very, very much in a group system. It's not like I'm, I'm advising eleven different students. I'm advising the group of eleven people. I, I, I think. Don't have personal experience of that, but I think it's a little bit more the way they do it in in, in empirical sciences, like a, there's like a lab. My students and I, we have um, so we have a weekly uh, meeting, all of us, uh, in which uh, um, two things happen. Uh, one is we have a seminar we call the Seminalchiv, which is one of one of the students have 20 minutes to present uh, a paper that. Um, that came on the archive in the last, I don't know, four months, let's say. We're not very strict about the exact date, but it is, seems to be something new. And, and the idea is that you don't present it. You're not expected to know the proofs or something like that. You're, the idea is to say why, why this question interests the people who wrote it. Um, and, and the idea is, is, is that I, I, you know, I want them to... Well, there's, there's several benefits to that, I think. But one of them is that I want them to feel part of the community. You know, I wanted to know the names of like, oh, this person is interested in that, and he wrote this other paper, and 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 oh, that that you know, uh, and if they came up with an idea, they say, oh, this is a cool idea because also this person might find it interesting, so I can talk to them. So I, I really want them to feel part of the community. 
especially since you know uh, Israel is a small country and um, and and relatively far away. You know, like to get to you know we can we can get um, uh, uh, we can go around Europe in a train. Uh, so so I want to I want my students to feel part of the community. I think. I think the mathematical community in large is, 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 is a wonderful thing to be part of. I, think, I have to admit that I think specifically in homotopy theory, uh, the community is especially uh, pleasant and, and kind of very fun, very friendly. So we have that. And then, and then they, they update each other. They give talks of like, not, not structured talks, but like, oh, here's what I realized here. You know, I, you know, remember I was stuck three weeks ago about that thing. So now I, you know, now I know what to do. So I, um, I try to get them a lot, a lot of interaction between them uh, because then I don't have to do my job. They can just advise each other. But, <laughs> um, but, but also uh, on top of, of, of laziness, uh, uh, I, I, just, I, I just feel like, I, I remember that, that I think the harder thing, the hardest thing for me, I think when I was PhD student, and a master student was this feeling sometimes like um, you know who is my audience like I'm proving this thing but what does someone care like I find it beautiful but there's a million other things that I could work on is there someone who's interested in the story is there is there someone that I can tell the story to and you'll say oh it, uh, it reminds you know it's, it's it's related to my part of the story so for me the social aspect is very important and I'm and I'm trying to create this uh, for them um, there's also something that, that I kind of stole from Clark Bowick. So, uh, so when I was a postdoc at MIT, Clark was there um, and, and he had this, this seminar called um, the uh, Bourbon Seminar, uh, which was like late, very late on Fridays. And, and the idea was we, just, we would just meet and just choose a question, just a mathematical question uh, that someone came across and just discuss it and drink uh, beers and bourbon uh, until the point we were too exhausted uh, to, to, to say anything mean, meaningful and, and, and just uh, And so, so, so I don't have a bourbon signal because bourbon is really not a, something that uh, really fits Israel very much, but I have something called Seminarak. Arak is a is a local is a local drink, and uh, and it's the same thing. Uh, we we meet, we we choose a problem, and we, we talk about it for about three hours, and and again the idea is to just uh, do math together as a group. That's so cool. I mean, your students seem to enjoy it very much from what I heard from them. <laughs> um, and so, does it happen that you sometimes like? Uh, discuss something in a chill way and then it becomes an actual project or a paper eventually? Oh, absolutely. Um, um, it, it happens um, quite a few times. So um, the first one, the first seminar we ever had, um, um, so Emmanuel Ferjun, who also attends, attends them, um, who was my, um, so I, I my, my my, my formal advisor in my PhD student was uh, Deshalit, who's a number theorist. But, but, but in practice, I had three advisors, which was Deshalit, uh, Fertun, who's a homotopy theorist, and, and David Kashden. Um, I just needed a lot of advice. So I had essentially three advisors. And, uh, and, and Fertun, uh, uh, he, he, uh, you know, he, he comes to, uh, to, uh, to most of the, the events and he, and, and he came to the first one and, and, and he suggested to try to generalize in all result of this. And, and uh, we, and it turned out during the seminar that he, he was kind of suggesting one step generalization, but, but it turned out that the modern technology of infinity categories actually allowed to solve the problem completely. It was really a lot of fun. And, and then one of my master's students then uh, which was just starting, and and he was kind of very active during during this interaction, and he didn't have a thesis problem yet. So I was like, "That's your thesis, just write it down," and and that became his thesis. Um, and he he stayed with me to for for PhD. So uh, 
hopefully it's in like you found it this fall and yeah and, and there's other things it's it's it's, it's actually pretty common for for for, uh, for things starting in the seminar to become uh, it, most of the time it doesn't I don't want it's not that every week we have a new 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 paper but but it's it's not that uncommon for something to kind of become become an actual uh, uh, project that's so cool sounds like a dream group it's always hard to know how much you see from you know the perspective of the advisor but my experience of it that there's no let, let's say this way i i i had the uh, the uh, i had the misfortune sometimes to to find myself in in, in, in mathematical social environments where, which has some toxicity to them uh, you know kind of the uh, um, um you know too uh competitive and i, I really don't like it and I, my, my, my impression, and I, I hope my students feel the same, that we don't have that. Like, it's, it's a very, very supportive group of people that really enjoy each other's company and enjoying learning together and learning from each other. And, and there's, so, yeah, so current, currently we are, we are 11. So it's, a, it's kind of a big group now. What do you do if after this interview you get numerous emails with people willing to join your group after you describe it so nicely? <laughs> um, okay, I, that, that, I haven't thought about that. Uh, <laughs> it be a problem. Um, uh, we'll see. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. So we, we, we were ten a week ago. So someone just joined. So I'm, you know, I'm, we're, we're still. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a good question. Um, in all seriousness, I'm I'm I am asking myself at at what is the point at which I won't be effective anymore, and 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 maybe have I passed it without noticing, which is more troubling. But hopefully, I didn't. I do try to to hear from my students if they feel that I'm that I don't have enough time for them. There are difficulties in that. It, it is true that you know I'm uh, it. You know, I, I know about advisors that meet every every one of their students personally for at least one hour hour every week. Um, I can't do that uh, because that would be you know that would be almost two days of work just that. Maybe I'm just lying to myself, but I I think it's actually better. Um, it does two things. One of them is I think that it encouraged them to um, really sit with problems that, you know, that there's something about, there's something if you, if you see your, your advisor too often, it's a little bit, I think, too easy to, when, when you come across um, um, something that you can't solve or trying to ask him. And I actually think one of my, my feeling is that one of the greatest thing you can you, you gain out of doing a PhD in math, even if you're not going to be a professional mathematician if you decide to you know do something else it's just the the experience of, of sitting in front of a very very hard problem uh for a very long time and and kind of what do you do how do you how do you deal with with getting stuck how do you how do you deal with um with, with not understanding like i feel i feel to me i feel like those are those are kind of emotional and intellectual tools which are i think are, I, I think I think they're quite universal, and they're they're they're, they're useful even if you're not staying a research mathematician. So I, 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 I feel like this free, you know, time I see them every three weeks or something like that. I think that's 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 not bad. And also, there's also this this effect that that I feel like if you if you see them too much, they they they, they feel like they have to. When when I had less students, I could do it, and sometimes I would I would it, it would seem that they they are. Uh, you know, they didn't get, get in really to do anything. And then the day before the meeting or the morning before the meeting, they're stressed that they have nothing to say. So they're kind of trying to find, you know, and, and, and it becomes a kind of a performative thing. Not that they're lying or something, you know, they're honest, but, but instead of the motivation coming from the problem or from, from, from curiosity, it's starting to be about not disappointing your advisor that you're meeting in, in, in Three hours, and I think that's that's a bad thing. So I think also kind of, uh, but again, it's it's possible that I'm just neglecting them and <laughs> justifying it for myself. That's, that's, the, that's the other explanation. So, do you know of any ways that help to develop these uh, tools 
like let's you called emotional tools of overcoming being stuck or you're born with it oh i i i absolutely absolutely believe that this is a skill really? and yeah yeah i think it's a skill i think it's a skill that can be taught i think actually this is one one of my main jobs as an advisor i feel like um there's not ha not having those skills when you start as a you know beginner master student or phd student seems to me to be actually correlated a little bit with being a very kind of a very successful student uh, because you know if you're if you're very good then you spend your undergrad years without ever actually trying to spend a lot of time trying to solve a problem because you know you solve them very quickly um so 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 yeah i, I think I, I i had a lot of experience of seeing students which are very very you know they know math very well they're very creative but they would just not they want they don't know what to do when they get stuck you know i i i, I have this i have an anecdote about this so i i i was once we had this kind of a tunnel uh that we did here at hebrew u about kind of uh, telling people about phd in math and then one student Kind of prospective student raised his hand and said, um, "So okay, so I understand. So let's say that I chose my advisor. Um, I went to him, he gave me this this problem, this research problem. I went home. I think about it. You know, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, and I don't know what to do. I don't. I can't. I can't solve it. What do I do then?" <laughs> I was like, and I said, "Well, first of all, <laughs> you try for another. You know." two, three, four weeks, five, you know, it's like, like the scale is completely wrong here about, you know, how, how long does it take to, to start to start moving in a, in a, in a research program of that, that magnitude, you know, being stuck for five hours doesn't mean anything. Um, but, but, I, but I do think there's, there's a lot of, you know, there, um, I call it the mathematician, uh, you know, it's kind of, um, it's, you know, it's like boxing, like someone does like this. You know, you you like you 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 keep moving. Like uh, you get you get stuck with the questions. So you're saying, okay, I can't solve this question. Um, I don't have an idea. So, is there a special case I can try? Um, trivial special case. Okay, let's try to do the trivial special case. Okay, if I can do it, can I do the next case? If not, why not? Why what what would help me? You know, like uh, okay, do I have an analogy? That, that a, a situation in which what I'm trying to do would work. Do, do I have a strategy? Do I have an example in which work? Like, and this, this kind of keep moving, keep kind of, you know, keep, keep like, this is, this, is, this is something which is, I think is a skill. And, and it's, it's something which is, it's, 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 um, it's something that I think you can learn and something that I think you can teach. And, and this is what I'm, you know, I, I, I think I'm trying to do. Uh, I, I actually think, I think there's a, there's a myth um, which I think is a, is a harmful myth in, in, um, in, 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 in the mathematical community, which is being a mathematician is like, you know, is like being a wizard in Harry Potter world, like either, either you're that or you're a, a mogul, you know, if you're, if you are, you know, you, you're both, you know, there's, a, I think it's a Hilbert quote, right? A, a mathematician is not being made, a mathematician is born. Um, and, and I think it's a very harmful uh, which I heard explicitly stated by mathematicians that I that I love and appreciate, but I I I I, I don't agree with that at all. I think, you know, of, of course, you know, as as in any kind of uh, uh, creative endeavor, um, there is some there is something called mathematical talent uh, that that of course has many forms, but okay, it, it exists. Um, I, I know, you know, not everybody can do anything to the same extent. But, but this idea that you either have it or you're not, and, and, and you can't teach someone to hone his skills, to be better in that, in it, to, to find a way that, that works for him to do it better. I, I think it's a, I, I think it's a, you know, I, first of all, I think it's, it's demonstratively false, but I also think it's, it's actually a, a very bad message uh, on, on top of it. I think, I think the, this idea that, that which I see, that, you know, young people going around thinking, you know, uh, 
I'm, you know, I'm either I either have this 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 you know this uh, the, I either have this this correct gene in my DNA or not, and and, and you know if if they feel like they they're doing badly at some point, it's, oh I just you know I just don't have it, and, or, or and, and you know and some people maybe sometimes think that that they're you know it, it's uh, it's uh, they were sent you know they were chosen by the gods to do it. I think both both sides of this equation are very are very bad. You're touching so many important topics. So actually, what you said about talent is very relieving for me to hear because um, I had quite hard time studying in Russia, studying mathematics, and it was a big shock when I moved to Germany that uh, people at the math department treated me completely differently, uh, treated me as if I was about to become a mathematician, uh, which was not uh, the message I was getting before, and. From what I gather, I think uh, in Russia, there is the, very strongly this message that you claim to be harmful, which is also my experience that talent is the thing that defines your future. And it was a cultural shock for me that in Germany, what was appreciated was the enthusiasm, that it was enough just to want to learn mathematics, to be active, to ask questions, to talk to people. That, I haven't seen this to be appreciated before. I have seen, you know, this genius mathematicians and their genius theorems to be appreciated. And it took me years to try to convince myself that it's okay to appreciate things that aren't talents. <laughs> but it is very hard to uh, change these things when they're wired in your head since childhood. And you hear about all these extremely talented people all the time. By the way, the first time I felt like I understand what motivic homotopy theory is in, is in one of your talks. I, I, I remember that it was like that, that, you know, I was like, oh, this is a, this is a story I can understand. It doesn't, oh. feel, I, I really like the way you, you, you made that, you made the motivic homotopy theory a story, you know, a, a story rather than kind of something, sometimes, I, I think sometimes presented as a historical account of and you know, in human insights, that that kind of doesn't, you know, you can you can't really uh, you, you can't really relate to to the way to your own thinking. So I yeah I I remember I remember a talk by by yours that that, that, that did exact that effect for me. It's how I stopped fearing and started to love uh, motivic homotopy theory. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is so wonderful to hear. Um. So you about, okay, so this uh, thing you mentioned is basically, I think the main question that people have about doing math if they ever try is like how to get unstuck after being stuck. So you said, I think, I loved your metaphor about boxing. Uh, I was also told that in tennis, you should never stay still. You should always move even if the ball is firing. So this is a cool metaphor, but um, are there any other like advice you can give to students about uh, this process of, uh, overcoming the feeling of being stuck. One thing that I, I think it's uh, it's important to say is that I think that that being stuck is not failing at research. It is research. To, to, to whatever extent I can, you know, I, I can, you know, I can call myself a mathematician. I can say that I'm spending most of my day sitting and being stuck. That's that's so. As far as I know, this is how research looks like. And I think a lot of a lot of the emotional difficulty has to do with the, with a feeling of failure I think this is this is this is one thing that that that, that kind of oh I, I I'm, something's wrong with me but being stuck is research that's what it is this is this is you know I think this is the kind of a big part of the experience um, at, at least at least for me and and I think you know you sh there, I think there's a first step which is kind of embracing it you know a lot of people say about a lot of people say that they hated math in high school or in school, which, you know, you don't hear a lot about other subjects that people have this visceral hate to them. Uh, um, and I think, you know, and of course, you know, there, there's a lot of reasons why that can be true. Uh, there, there's, there's a way in which the way that math is being taught is, is, is not presenting math in the, in the best possible way. But, but I think another part of it which is maybe really about the subject, not only about kind of the culture around it, is that I think math is the main subject that you that you get to meet uh, when you're uh, when you're uh, you know when you're high school or before, which you can really not understand something. 
truly, truly be in the situation in which you truly don't understand something. And I think that's, this is a, you know, as we start, this is a painful experience. And, and, you know, and, and one of the things that, you know, I would, I would love if, 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 if you know, if, if it's schools, we would, we would use it as a way to teach people not to be afraid of it and kind of embrace this, this, okay, I, I'm not understanding it. That's something that's exciting. That's, that's an opportunity to learn something. And it's not, you know, it's not only the the kind of a pain, and 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 I think it's again, I think it's a it's a, it's 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 an emotional intellectual skill which is later in life is useful in other subjects which are not only math. So what I'm trying to say is that 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 one thing is really saying, oh, I'm you know, there's something that I'm missing here. Uh, that's not me. There's something that I'm missing, and so I can try to find it. So this is, I think, this is an emotional. You know, there's another metaphor that I have, which I, I find useful, is, is, is to try running toward the problem. I find like sometimes you're, you're kind of, there's something that, that doesn't work, there's something you can't solve and, 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 and you kind of, you find yourself kind of rotating it in a circle, kind of trying different formalism, restating the problem in a different way, restating the problem in a different way. Um, and 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 I find that sometimes I kind of do it because I'm you know I'm I'm too much concentrated on trying to solve the problem uh, and not much about kind of understanding the problem. But why why? And when I find myself doing it, I'm, I find that it's it's useful to kind of try to you know stop trying to solve the problem, just trying to try to find the most horrible place where it goes wrong, but that you can capture it in your hands and like oh this is this is this is why it's hard. This is why I'm, I'm, I'm struggling because I have no idea what is the, you know, what is the fifth homotopic group of that complex. But okay, but now I know what I don't know. Okay, so that's because I, I, feel, I feel forcing yourself to trying to explain um, why you find something hard. You know, it's, it's very useful. Stop, stop trying to solve the problem. Just explain why you can't solve it. And it's, it's a different question now. It's not exactly the same question. And, and I find it useful to kind of move to that question. And then many times after you can explain why you don't know how to solve the problem, you realize that, that you know, kind of you zoomed in on what would make it possible to solve the problem. Um, sometimes that, and sometimes you just realize that it's because there's something which you don't, you don't have access to. But um, anyway, this is, some, this is another thing that I think I, I find very, very useful. Trying, trying to engage with the difficulty very directly. Yeah, so something that often happens to me, it's often when you try to do this, you realize that uh, the things you're missing may be the, uh, some details of the definitions of the objects you're working with, not some like complicated facts about them, but just like be honest with about definitions is already a lot. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yes. Or, or the question, can you give a single example in, of, of the object that you're talking about? That, that's another <laughs> <laughs> that I find, and, you know, that you know, I find myself sometimes forget that. It, well, do I have an actual example for this ob this abstract object that I've been thinking about for the last hour? Uh, so I, I I think it's yeah, it's it's this this kind of going <laughs> forcing yourself to be very honest about why why there's a problem is very helpful. Yeah, I think in our in our area it's especially hard with examples. But um, so Tamar. Um, th this is all great that you were telling, but uh, maybe in addition to all you said, uh, let, uh, let me ask you for the end. Uh, is there any more uh, advice you would give to young mathematicians? Uh, wow. Um, here's, here's, here's a few things that come to mind. <laughs> so one of them is I think there's, there's some, sometimes a tendency, uh, you know, when, when people are young mathematicians and they're trying to you know, to define themselves, to find, you know, try to answer the question of who I am. Uh, so sometimes they, yeah, I, I seen it happen, people defining by themselves, you know, in, a, in kind of a negative space way, you know, oh, you know, I hate analysis, you know, or I hate combinatorics. So, you know, set theory is boring or something like that. You know, I'm a, I'm an algebraic geometer. I hate uh, whatever, I don't know. Uh, I, I, you know, I had, I had, I, I hate differential equations. I, I would not recommend it. I think um, you know it's it's absolutely fine to have a mathematical taste, but I think it's a good idea up to a priori trust that if, if if other people find the subject of math interesting, 
um, it means that there's something to it. And it's, you don't have to know everything and nobody knows everything, but, but I think it's a good idea to, to approach every, every subject. Uh, it's also, I think, goes outside of math, but we're talking about math now, uh, with, with kind of respect and interest. I should also say that many things that I, that I, that I have learned um, because somehow I learned them because you know I, I was I was in this course or in this talk that I was really not supposed to be on a different subject than I did. Uh, um, a lot of them turned out kind of turned out in my research years later, you know, like 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 Chekhov's gun. Uh, it's it's really <laughs> uh, so I, I had this experience to some extent that um uh, one of the first, I don't even remember what the problem was. I, I didn't actually solve it. But one of the first problems why I was presented it uh, as, as, a, as when I started my PGA thesis was um, uh, David Kashtan gave me some some problem in our in, in kind of arithmetic geometry, and I and I and I came to his office like two weeks later, and I said, uh, look, um, I realized that uh, you can do that and that and that and that and that reduces the problem uh, to a question in uh, in irrational geometry. And I'm not really a rational geometer, which is a, you know, I'm, I'm kind of blushing as, you know, I was, I was in the beginning of my PhD. I, I wasn't anything. <laughs> so I was, I was also not a rational geometer, but it was kind of a, uh, but, but in the same way that I wasn't anything else. And, and, um, and, and he said, what do you mean are you, you're not a rational geometer? Are you a mathematician? And I and I remember this sentence because it really was like, yeah, I should maybe I'll fail, but I should I should I, I shouldn't decide that the problem stopped just because I got to the point of the problem in which I think it's no longer my business, and it really changed my perspective very much. I remember this conversation, and I and I I hope they stop doing that. I think another thing that I would say is that, you know, there, there's something about the way we learn math as undergrads and maybe you know your master students to some extent at the beginning which is very structured and also tend to be, especially as an undergrad, uh, very homogeneous across universities and even countries, uh, which means that when someone finished their undergrad, there's this idea is that, that this is something a mathematician should know. And to whatever extent that that, that, that notion makes sense or not, doesn't matter. Uh, I, I think what, what happens later is that they keep, they tend to keep running this, um, the same logic, which said, oh, I wish, you know, they feel ashamed that they don't know something because they really should know that. And I, and, you know, and, and, and they feel like, oh, I, you know, how, 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 how dare I learn, how dare I start learning about motivic homotopic theory when I realize that I actually don't know, I don't, I don't know enough about uh, some algebraic surfaces. That's so embarrassing. Um, and I think, you know, it's, 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 of course, a good idea to to, to, to try to learn around the things that you learn, but, but this idea that there's the thing that you're supposed to know and there's an order to them, you learn that and then that and then that and just kind of a, there's a certain ladder and you, you, you did something wrong if you came in the middle of the ladder, I, I think it's, it's, it's a complete myth. Uh, it doesn't exist. Math, you know, we didn't, we didn't organize math the same way. You know, for undergrad, we have a certain system, but for everything else, it's just a big mess. And, and all of us all the time have things that are supposed to know, but don't know every, you know, in, in any level of seniority. Um, and, and there's no, you know, you shouldn't feel ashamed, you shouldn't feel guilty that you're, you know, you're supposed to know something and you don't know it. You can just, you know, either learn it or, or if you're not free to do it this time, you're doing something else right now, not learning right now. And it's fine. You're doing, you know, that's the, there's no, um, um, there's no kind of pre-approved, uh, um, you know, system of getting into being a certain kind of mathematician. That's 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 not the way it works.